Welcome to the Hangry Games Arena, where Kelly Brewster, the author of What's Eating You and the host of the Hangry Games, she's shaking up the weight loss game and let's get this party started. Welcome back to the Hangry Games Arena. I'm so excited to have you guys here. Hangry Name Nation. Yes, yes. Um, blessed to be here, able to spend some time with you. Um, I just want to um I just want to encourage you. I want to motivate you today. And if necessary, I want to give you a little kick in the pants if I need to, um, to get you off the sidelines and into the game. Now, today it's going to be on like Donkey Kong. I want to empower you to make the most important decision. And I know you said, ah, the Kelly, that was the aha moment. This is the most important decision you can make with your weight loss and wellness journey. And that's the first small step in the right direction. Now, we all know when it comes to starting something, starting something new, um, you know, fresh, inspiring in our lives, the first step can sometimes be for me too. I mean, this can be for anybody. The first step can feel kind of overwhelming. Uh, it can feel a little intimidating. Um, and frankly, sometimes it just feels impossible to obtain in our mind. But why is that? Why? What makes that step so stinking intimidating? And what makes us actually consider, you know, doing laundry or going to clean the pantry out or some, that's not happening at my house, by the way, but <laughs> what would make us want to do all those things and not really consider starting our wellness and weight loss journey? Why would we avoid the very first step like the plague or should I say the pandemic? You know, I think part of the answer here is going to back to what we briefly discussed in that first podcast, and that's getting the aha moment. You have to get to the point where you realize that you have been riding on this elevator down and you literally have hit the basement. And the only way the elevator can go, quite frankly, is up. And so that you got to get to that moment. But that's great, Kelly. You know, I, I get it. So uh, it's easy for you to stay. Just go, go take the first step. It's not that hard, blah, 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 you know. Uh, yeah, because you got to remember, we talked about this the first time. I was at the intersection of desperation and despair, and I'm trying to find the exit ramp to Easy Street, which, by the way, does not exist, okay? Anything, and I mean anything, that's worth something is going to take the big E. And yes, that's E for effort. The cool thing though about effort is just one small step followed by another small step followed by yet another small step is in fact effort. And it does create this momentum to achieve those long-term results that you're looking for. Now, when I talk to patients about weight loss, and remember, this is the, the majority of the conversations I have today, I always talk about how to eat the elephant, or in our case, talking at the Hangry Games Arena, the emotional monster, and the answer is always going to be one bite at a time. Or in this case, what we're talking about today is one small step, followed by, again, another one to create that atmosphere for exponential results. There's a quote that I I love it. It goes something like this. It's better to take many small steps in the right direction than one leap forward only to stumble backwards. And one of the biggest ruts that most individuals can have just starting this journey, it reminds me a lot of like a drag race. Um, I don't like NASCAR. I'm sorry, people. I just can't watch something for 500 laps. I might watch it for the last five just to see who winds up winning, but I do like drag racing. I think that's pretty cool because it's a short track. They got to get, they got to get it, uh, the car going pretty quickly. Um, so what usually happens in drag racing is they're at the line and they're revving the engine up. They're ready to go. They're waiting for that green light and they take off full speed, popping a wheelie as they leave off the, off the starting line. This is kind of what happens to many individuals when they first start their, their weight loss and wellness journey. They literally will go to the store and buy like $500 worth of all organic healthy products. They'll maybe buy multiple cookbooks or print tons of recipes from the internet out. Um, they might buy subscriptions to the latest and greatest exercise regimen, um, maybe buy subscriptions to the latest and greatest supplements as well. 
and they literally are going to spend tons of money and they come out of the gate just, I mean, like gangbusters. They're just like scream out of the gate. I'm getting rid of everything. They throw everything out of the pantry. They, uh, they cut everything out all at once and it may work for a week or two or maybe six, maybe even a couple months, but it will get old because you, we, we, we did not give ourselves the opportunity to have small wins that create the momentum for that long-term success and wellness. Um, but you know, you're, um, really this, again, we talked about this slow and steady does win the race. And here's the thing I want you to remember. This is not a competition with the girl. I want to call her Patty or whoever, but girlfriend in the cubicle next to you at work that you're sitting there by right now. And you're actually work supposed to be working on stuff and you're listening to me instead. Thank you, by the way. But that person next to you, she's not in your race. You are in your race. Okay. So this is not a competition. I want you to put something together that's going to create momentum for you to have permanent changes for your long-term wellness and weight loss. You're like, okay, great, Kelly, let's get this party started. Give me a few pointers, right? Um, that's supposed to make a huge difference in the long run. Well, you know, one of the things I talk about in the What's Eating You book, I refer to a book um, called The Atomic Habits. It's written by a guy named James Clear. Um, one of the, the way that I was initially introduced to this book was actually in church. Our pastor uh, did a series on it, and he wanted to encourage the parishioners and, and the congregation to uh, develop really great spiritual habits by just doing 1% changes, get up a little bit earlier to pray, get up a little bit earlier to read, that kind of stuff. And I really loved this, this concept. And I was like, I was at the time doing the outline and writing the book. And I'm like, I need to, I need to read this because I feel like this is something that the readers really need to bite into and get their teeth, uh, sink their teeth into. Well, one of the things that he talks about is that there is a British uh, biking team and I'm talking the big L's, man, they, they did not win. They did not win anything for decades, decades. And I guess the country just got pretty fed up. What they did was they hired a very energetic new coach uh, who wanted to create change in an environment and to just enhance the performance of the uh, bikers. And that he did. He used a term, and I'm going to say it a couple of times, and then I'm going to give you my version of the term. He used a, uh, a method called the aggregate of marginal gains. Aggregate of marginal gains. Now, what I like to call this is the accumulation of small steps. Okay, same thing. It's an accumulation of small steps. So here's what he did. He made 1% changes in all parts of the biker's training, their restoration, their, uh, their everything, okay? And they're eating all of that. They changed the diets for them. They changed the bike seats. They changed the mattresses and the pillows that they slept on. Every little area of their life, that, that the socks, the shoes, the helmets, I think that's what they're called, everything that they utilize they did 1% changes in all of those areas. And what's so cool is it made a huge impact and it worked. Within five years, they had won 60% of tour races. This includes Tour de France and they took the Olympics. Now, you got to understand all of these, these races that they run, this is world championships. So every country in the world is participating and they won 60% of the races that were out there. But I don't know if you heard this part, but I'm going to review back over this. It took them five years. Okay. So I'm not trying to discourage you right now and tell you that it's going to take you five years to lose weight. That's not what I'm saying. But they didn't expect the results in six weeks or two weeks, or even a couple of months, they realized that they were investing into this, this long term change with all of these little small steps that they were doing. Um, one small step doesn't seem like a lot and it, and it doesn't really take a whole lot of effort, but the impact is, it, it, the impact is great, but it's not notable. Like I don't realize I'm making this big change, but when you turn around, you can see that you have made a, an amazing, there's amazing difference there. Um, I, I gotta laugh. My husband and I started playing pickleball 
And um, technically, we don't play, we obsess. But that's another story for another day. But we decided to take a few lessons just um, because we were going to be playing in a tournament in, um, in March. And we wanted to we just wanted to sign up and we wanted to work on strategy and, and working together as a doubles team. And so, um, we go out there and, um, I, I, I remember I played sports in high school and college and I played competitive tennis. And so I used to put a lot of power into my, my hits, uh, in my shots. I would do a lot of top spin slicing, a lot of junk on my, on, on my hits. And so you have to understand the paddle that you use in pickleball and the ball, which is by the way, a wiffle ball, um, you, they're really not meant to either have power or our spin or top spin. Okay. Or movement. Um, so for me, it's actually taken me a whole lot longer to kind of adjust because I've got to retrain my brain versus my husband. But what was really funny, we were out there, we were actually out there last night. Our coach is pretty uh, funny because he doesn't have a problem calling you a couillon, which is basically uh, stupid in, um, in Cajun. Um, and we got called that a couple of times. <laughs> But anyway, um, he said, y'all are moving too much. You're all flailing around like, and, and y'all won't stop moving your hand. Your arms are everywhere. He's like, don't be a T-Rex, but don't be flailing around. Just, just keep it in this, in this area. He's like, you know, less is more. And it, man, I was like, golly, this is such an affirmation for my podcast tomorrow. Because the fact of the matter is he literally was running us all over the court and he did not move more than three feet from side to side. He stayed in a little small box and beat the tar out of us <laughs> and did not move much. And he didn't take much effort at all. So the small steps that take the minimal effort and can far exceed that flailing attempt that you're trying to do to make some quick changes and large changes, or like I should say, very quickly. Um, more is not more. Sometimes less is really more. So what does that look like for you? What are some applicable things that we can take away from that? All right, let's talk about that. Well, maybe it starts with, yeah, you know what? I'll stop drinking sodas um, for the first week um, of this eating plan. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove sodas. I'm going to increase my water intake. You know, what if you drink eight sodas a day? If you don't, please stop. If you do, please stop. <laughs> but if you do drink eight sodas a day, start by reducing it down to four. That's a small step. That's a 1% change that over time, if you went from eight to four and then four to two and then two to one, and then you stop, you've made exponential change and you're drinking a liquid sugar. So as soon as you get rid of that calorie in that sugar, you are going to start seeing weight loss. So start by doing that. That's easy. It's simple. It's not notable. It's not a high impact, but you're going to see big exponential differences with it. Maybe try to reduce your portion size. Um, start my, maybe by not getting seconds. There are people, I, I can honestly say that not only was I an emotional eater, but I like eating for sport as well. I will, if I eat crawfish with you, I can guarantee you I eat like a man and my pile will look as big as my husband's. I don't even sit next to him because I feel like I'm going to embarrass myself. But <laughs> you try to try to stop eating seconds first. Start there. And once you stop eating seconds, then maybe get a smaller plate and then fill that smaller plate up so that you feel like your plate is full. And but it, it, you're getting less food. So we're going to reduce those portion sizes. Remember, I mean, in Louisiana, your portion size is this, it's your plate. And so if my plate's not full, it's like, what are you doing? I, I <laughs> you put me on a diet? Well, it is actually the portion size we just think that if it's not doesn't fill the the plate up then we didn't get every all of the food that we were supposed to get try to make some small effective food choices by starting start with like eating out let me give you an example what if you stopped going to starbucks every single day and instead maybe you just went one to two times a week well that's a small effort that provides huge gains right um, not only that, but it's going to definitely start positively affecting your checkbook as well. Um, what if you started changing the items, um, that you eat? So let's say instead of eating a fried shrimp po' boy, and I'm sure some of you guys just heard that and you're like, Ooh, that would be so awesome to eat tonight. <laughs> but instead of doing that, what if you got a grilled shrimp salad? You're still getting shrimp. You're still eating the shrimp, 
Um, you're, you're avoiding the bread, which is a carb. You're avoiding the breading on the shrimp, which is also a carb. It's very high fat because they fried it in, 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 in fat. But I, and you know, look, here's the deal. Eat the salad. I don't care if you even eat the croutons. I don't care because you just turned away a shrimp po' boy. So just those little things that you can do build up those little things you do over the course of time, make exponential differences. Um, maybe you start by just making that better choice with just one meal in a day. Maybe, you know what, Kelly, I know that dinner is always my downfall. So I'm going to tell you something that's going to sound counterproductive, but it works. Start with the easier, the quick wins. Um, when I am trying to help my patients, uh, stop smoking or smoking cessation, I tell them to do this. I tell them to take their cigarettes and there's 20 in a pack. I understand Um, and if they smoke a half a pack a day, I want you to put 10 in a Ziploc bag and you can smoke them whenever you want, however you want. I don't care. And every couple of days, I want you to take one of them out. So, you know, in a couple of days, you're going to have eight in a couple of days, you're going to have six, et cetera, et cetera. Because what's going to happen is they're going to, the ones that they hold on to most are usually the ones in the morning and ones in the evening. And those are the hardest ones for them to change. So I want them to get a lot of quick wins and to build that momentum so that when they get to those last couple, it's not as intimidating and overwhelming. Well, the same thing applies here. If dinner is your is your nemesis, let's start with breakfast and lunch. Let's let's make sure we get some positive changes for breakfast and lunch because you'll see some improvement with your eating and your weight loss and your wellness. But we'll get to that dinner when we've built that momentum up. Okay. So I really, I think that can definitely be a game changer for you. Um, what if you started prepping your meals? Um, even if you just, if you don't prep, I I mean, I usually do five meals a week and that's what we try to push with the six week eating plan. Um, but what if you just did two meals a week and you prep two meals a week and you did two so that you'd have two for breakfast, uh, two for lunch, excuse me, and two for dinner. Okay. Um, then you gradually worked your way up to those five five meals. Um, that's something that will gain momentum, that will help you to develop longer plans and or sustainable plans. Um, what I did in the um, six week plan was I tried to develop uh, the skill set week by week, so that the first week, if you are truly a novice, I'm not going to overwhelm you with chicken cacciatore. <laughs> that's just stupid. So I have some recipes like, you know, grilled chicken wings. They're easy. Anybody really can make that egg roll in a bowl. Easy. Anybody can really make that so that you can develop this skill set, develop a little bit of a confidence level so that when you get into week two, then when you get into week three, you're starting to build off of what you just learned in the previous week. And so I think that's important. And even if you don't use our prep plan, If you use something else, start with a couple, build up off of that. Remember it exponential changes when you make those small steps. Um, I will tell you another thing that I think is very important is just from an emotional perspective, um, you know, just taking those prep for it steps a little at a time. Um, prep stands for perception, rationalization, expectation, and preparation. I did those as steps so that you can literally work through emotional eating. And so take time with those steps, the activity sheets that are in that free workbook on the website, those are meant to help you work through those issues. Don't run through them. The first chapter in the book, we talked about this in the first podcast is your testimony. Don't hurry up and scribble down your testimony because then you're not, you're not being fair to yourself. I want you to understand what got you here so that you can make lifestyle changes that are going to be sustainable long term. And if you don't understand what got you there and you're just trying to hurry up just so you can fill boxes, this is not going to work. It's it's going to be again that drag race where we wind up dying out after 100 yards in. Um the other thing that I would tell you is um exercise. <sighs> I love my Peloton people. Um they come into the office and I'm like, "Okay, so what are you doing?" cuz you know, I'm going to ask two questions, your eating plan, your exercise before we ever talk about anything else. And they'll say, "Oh, I just got my Peloton." And I'm in my mind I'm thinking, "Oh, you just got another clothes hanger for your for your house. You got another place where you can hang those clothes that need to dry." And I know that sounds very <laughs> pessimistic, but and I'm not. I'm not being that way. But 
don't buy a Peloton if you've never got on a, on a, a stationary bike. Please don't do it. They're extremely expensive. And if you get on a, I hate stationary bikes. For that matter, I don't even like bikes that go anywhere. They, they hurt my rear end. So if I'm going to get on a bike and I hate it and I buy a $1,500 bike, dollar bike, I'm not going to wind up liking that bike. Small changes. Get a gym membership for 15 bucks and go get on a bike, get on a treadmill, get an elliptical, get on a Stairmaster. Figure out what works for you and what you love. I have a renaissance with my Nordic Track, my treadmill, but why do I have my treadmill and why can I get on my treadmill and love it every time I get on it? Because I figured out when I started training that the treadmill was the easiest fun thing for me to do. And so I'm going to maintain that because I'm, it's not monotonous for me. I'm not that I'm not anti Peloton people, Peloton people don't get me wrong. I'm not. What I want you to do is make sure that you're not drag racing into even exercise. Here's the other thing too. I joined a gym. I'm like, okay, with my friend. Oh, that's great. That's even better. Because what happens is when your friend doesn't go with you and I'm not going to stay a lot, a long time on exercise, but I'm gonna say a couple of things here. Don't start an exercise program that is reliant on another individual. When you start an exercise plan, it needs to be like you, me, myself, and I. That's what it needs to be. Because at the end of the day, they're going to tell you, oh, I've got to get this done. Or, oh, i got to bring the kids to soccer. Or, oh, I, you know, I'm not feeling good. i got a headache, whatever. And it's going to be an easier way for you to rationalize, which is that second step in the prep process, yourself out of why you need to do that. Okay. So that's a little side note. That's a freebie for today. Um, anyway, um, the other thing I want you to do is start small. Uh, a lot of patients that, that I talk with, they work uh, sedentary jobs. They're sitting for many hours a day. I had somebody today that I saw and she's like, I literally get up and go to the bathroom. That's the only thing I do when I, I, when I leave my desk. I'm thinking to myself, you do know that you're not an indentured servant, right? But that's another story. So I'm like, but you can do something. Get up out of your seat every hour. And for one minute, I want you to do some squats. I want you to do push-ups against the wall. Um, I want you to do lunges. I want you to switch it up every, for one minute every hour. I said, now, when you do one minute every hour in an eight-hour time frame, you've done eight minutes that day. In a week, you've now done, I mean, you've done what, 40 minutes of exercise if you work five days a week? I mean, that's not bad. That's good. That's that's it, essentially a 40-minute workout that you've just put in by just getting those one small little bits of time in. So just kind of think of it from that perspective. The big thing really with the 1% change is, is leverage, what's called like a domino effect. Um, there's an article that was written, uh, it's on Thrive Yard, and it talks about eight tips on the power of small steps. And taking action is by far the biggest component to success. Uh, walk the talk, don't talk the walk, okay? Um, and let me repeat that because I want you to make sure you do it. It's better to walk the talk, take action, than to talk the walk, do nothing but plan, okay? Um, remember too that dreams can only be birthed through your actions. Um, you wanna lose 25 pounds? That's great. You can look at all the dress catalogs you want. You can buy that string bikini, um, but until you put action to that plan, all that that dream is still a dream and that's going to wind up staying in your closet. The domino effect works on starting with one domino that leverages the movement for the next one that literally could be bigger than the first domino that you started with, which is incredible. So you literally can move 50% greater domino just by the momentum that you have from the first one. And I think that's just so crazy because that means that momentum works, folks. When you do these 1% things and you just build off of what you just did, you're creating this momentum that's really hard to stop. Take one step each day and start where you are. If you decide to do that, you want to get healthy and you want to start eating healthy and it's a Thursday at 1 p.m., that's when you're starting. Do not say, oh, I want to eat healthy. I'm going to start on Monday. Don't do it. Please just do it for me. Don't start an eating plan on a Monday and definitely don't do it on New Year's Day. Okay. Those are the two biggest times that people will actually fail. Okay. Make small steps 
a regular habit for you, okay? And don't get upset if you wind up having a step back in the interim, two steps forward, one step back. Those are little things that can make huge differences. And you know, the thing about taking small steps too, is that when you take small steps, it gives you an opportunity to quickly evaluate. Is this something I'm really going to like to do? Going back to the Peloton. If I get on a tre- uh, the, the um, treadmill at a gym membership that I paid $15 for, and I know, oh my gosh, I love doing this. Now I can make that step. I've now evaluated. It's created an evaluation that's, that costs me very little in time, effort, and money and resource, but yet I can get better and bigger results as, as a result of that. So, um, you know, just, it, it works just simply, you can evaluate it. If it flops like a fish, get rid of it. If it, if you, if it's something you just, it, it just makes a world of difference for you then that's great. Hold on to it. And it's going to help you with that long term wellness and weight loss. Finally, I want you to just remember that slow and steady does win the race. You know, remember, I'm the queen of analogies, So I'm going to try to teach you in terms you can understand. Um, I want you to think of this like a rock climber. A rock climber just doesn't come up to the side of the mountain and just like just start like scaling this thing like, like Spider Man, like, you know, and goes all the way up. They are very methodical. They make sure they have good footing. They make sure they hammer in those uh, little clasps or whatever they are, and they make sure their ropes in that so that if by chance they do fall, they're not going to fall all the way to the bottom. They're going to fall to where that last secure step was, that last secured um, little clasp or whatever it is that they hammer into the into the side of the mountain. So my point being is when you can do those small steps and you can secure your footing then you're going to have, there's less opportunity for you to, uh, to lose the race. And it's remember, it's your race, right? Keep in mind a lifestyle change, something that should, that you need, you need to have sticking power for the long run. Um, I like to use this term. I want you to think of the sticking power like this. I tell this people to the people all the time. I want you to paint the barn door till the paint sticks. Now this speaks more to persistence and perseverance. But in order for for me to do that, small, steady brush strokes allow me to get the job done. So that works hand in hand. So that's it for today. But you know, I've got takeaways, you know, I always have takeaways for you. So aka takeaway homework, however you want to say it, because I want you to have a chance to take some of these things to make them applicable for your long term wellness and weight loss journey. So For this week, what I want you to do is I want you to take time to plan out, plan a few small changes that you're going to incorporate into your week. I want these 1% small changes to be incorporated into the current plan that you have now. Doesn't mean you need to make this big, huge, full plan because sometimes it takes, you get worn out just making the plan, right? You do all the planning and then you're just tired and you just want to go eat Ben and Jerry's. What I want you to do is to incorporate where you are now, okay? Uh, you're going to be really, truly amazed at how quickly these small changes can start making the big differences for you. Um, one more analogy, and then I'll let you go. I want you to think about it like this. If you got on a raft in the ocean and you were very close to shore, one small wave after one small wave after one small wave, um, you look up and you've drifted a significant difference from the shore, Now, I want you to now jump onto that figurative raft this week, and I want you to imagine that every 1% change that you do is like one small wave after one small wave after one small wave, and when you look up, you have drifted an incredible distance from where you first started from. You can do this one small step at a time. I pray this week is amazing for you guys. Thanks again for tuning in and spending time with the Hangry Games Arena. Make sure to subscribe to YouTube or Spotify so that you can get notifications of the upcoming episodes. And check out again, prepfort.com for lots of free resources there. Our free What's uh, Eating You workbook that accompanies the book and our Kitchen's, Kitchen's Essential 101 video. Much love. Can't wait to hang out with you again next week. And remember, may the odds always be in your favor. I'll see you next week. 